In this video, we are going to talk about how you find rate of change. So the definition of rate of change is the change in y divided by the change in x. And a lot of times in math, you'll see that described as delta y over delta x. This just means change in. It's a Greek symbol. So the one thing we have to remember, though, is that y could be a lot of things. y could represent our output. It could represent our dependent variable when we think about a situation. So we don't just say y, we have to think about what y actually means. Same thing for x, right? x could represent our inputs, but in a situation it represents our independent variable. So being able to identify that is actually really helpful when we're trying to find the rate of change. So this is a definition that we know, that we will always use, and it is true in every single situation. So in this video, we want to be able to figure out how to find the rate of change when you're given a table, when you're given a graph, or when you're given a situation. So let's look at situation first, just because it seems more intuitive to us. All right, so here's our situation. It's been a long day. George just got home from school and he's starving. So he's heating up some water to make some mac and cheese. The water starts at room temperature, which is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and after six minutes, the water is boiling at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to know what is the average rate at which the temperature increases. So something to point out in here is that I said average rate because I don't know for a fact that it's increasing at a constant rate of change. So we just know over six minutes, it went from 70 degrees to 212 degrees. So to figure out our rate of change, we need to know what the independent variable is and what the dependent variable is. So our independent variable, which are the inputs, would be the time. Time just keeps on keeping on. It's not really what we're measuring. The outputs, our dependent variable, would be the temperature. So when I'm talking about rate of change, I am finding, essentially, the change in temperature divided by the change in time. Okay, so when we think about our situation now, change, or difference, means to subtract. So when we start looking at our temperature, well, in the end, it was 212 degrees, and it started at 70 degrees. So I want to find the difference between 212 and 70. Divided by, well, at the end, 6 minutes had passed, minus 0 minutes would be a change of 6 minutes. So when we actually calculate this, then, we get 212 minus 70, which is 142 divided by 6. And if we type that into our calculator, we get 23.67 degrees Fahrenheit every minute. So basically what's happening is that the water is increasing by 23.67 degrees every minute that passes. Now we're going to look at how we would find the rate of change when we're given a table of values. So remember, rate of change is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x on a given interval for us, because we don't necessarily know that it's constant. So in this first question, it's asking us to find the rate of change from when x equals negative 2 to when x equals 0. So I'm basically looking at these two entries in our table. So if I want to find the change in y, I'm basically asking myself, what would we do to go from 9 to 7? Well, we subtracted 2. So my change in y is a minus 2. Well, to go from negative 2 to 0 in my x's, my change in x was adding 2. So to find our rate of change, we're really doing change in y, which was negative 2, divided by change in x, which was positive 2, which gives me a negative 1. So that means, essentially, that my y is going down negative 1 every time my x goes up by 1. Now, we know that 9 minus 2 is 7, but if we didn't, the way that we really are getting this negative 2 is we're taking our second value, 7, and subtracting our first value, 9. 7 minus 9 is negative 2. Same thing over here. We're really taking our second value, 0, and subtracting a negative 2 because we're finding the difference between these two values. Well, 0 minus a negative 2 
is positive 2. That's how we end up with these values. So now they want us to find the rate of change from the interval of x equals 0 to x equals 7. All right, well, this time I'm using this point and this point. So what we're going to do is I'm going to restack those over here. 0, 7. I'm going to make my own mini table and 7, negative 1, just so that I don't have to deal with all this other stuff. So my rate of change is my change in y. So from 7 to negative 1, we subtracted. We went down 8 spaces. And from 0 to 7, we went up eight, or 7 spaces. So our rate of change would be negative 8 over 7. So it's basically saying that the y goes down 7 every time the x goes to the, increases by, I'm sorry, the y goes down 8 every time the x increases by 7. So our last one we want to look at is from x equals 5 to x equals 7. So now I'm looking at just these two. So again, I'm going to rewrite them over here so I don't have to worry about all that other stuff. So our change in y from 6 to negative 1, we went down 7 spaces. And from 5 to 7, we went up 2 spaces. So our rate of change would be negative 7 over 2. Again, it goes back to that, that definition that we learned that rate of change is equal to your change in y, your difference in y, divided by your difference in x. Now let's look at it from a graph. When we're finding rate of change from a graph, we have to kind of remember where on our graph would our y values be and where on our graph would our x values be. So we know that our vertical axis, these are our y values, and our horizontal axis, these represent our x values or our inputs. So when we're finding rate of change, and we remember that rate of change is really your change in y divided by your change in x. Well, on a graph, that's asking how much do I go up or down divided by how much do I go left or right, okay? So when we're looking at it from an interval, again, x equals 0 to x equals 1. Well, when x equals 0, we're right here on our graph. And when x equals 1, we're right here on our graph. So essentially, I'm asking the question, how did I get from this point to this point? Well, our change in y, we went up one space, and we went over one space. This is the visual representation of what we did before. So our rate of change would be 1 divided by 1, which is just a rate of change of 1. So in our situation, this graph represents the distance over time. It's essentially saying I increase my distance one foot per second, okay, as an average rate of change. This is, even though it looks different than the table, it's really the same thing. Because if I take this ordered pair, that would be 0, 1. The second ordered pair would be, oops, sorry, 0, 2. Whoopsies. Second ordered pair is 1, 3. If we find those differences, when up 1, up 1, it's the same thing we did a second ago when we were looking at it from a table. So now let's see if we're looking at it from our graph of from x equals 3 to x equals 5. Well, at 3, when x is 3, so at 3 seconds, we're up here at 7 feet away from the motion detector. At 5 seconds, we're up here at 9 feet away from the motion detector. So our rate of change would be our change in y. So I went up 2 divided by right 2. So our rate of change is 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So on this interval, we have an average rate of change of 1 foot per second. We can tell that it's curvy, so it's not constant, but on average, we're increasing our distance by the same rate each time. Now we want to look at from when x is 5 to when x is 10. Well, when x is 5, we're still here. This is the point we're starting with. When x is 10, we're now right there at 7 feet away. So to find the rate of change between these two points, we do our change in y. So this time I went down 2. And to the right, one, two, three, four, five spaces. So our rate of change for the interval five seconds to 10 seconds would be a negative two over five. So what that says is that my distance goes down two feet in five seconds. So I'm moving slower here than I was moving over here.